Hello, my name is Jeff Bull. Welcome to the September 6th meeting of the Landing Commission. We have a small agenda, but a couple of items that are not on the agenda, so I'd like to move through this quickly so we can all go home and enjoy the rest of our lives. Number one is Hicksbridge Landing Update, including the Northwest section. If yeah, it's all right. I can it's all right. No, here's an agenda, and I've added a few things to it you can take a look at, be aware of. Um, so I have spoken with Chris Capone and also with a member of the uh, CONCOM who happened to stop the day I was looking at the northwest section, that grassy area, and saying, wouldn't this be nice if the public could use this? And Chris and the other CONCOM member thought that most or probably all of the trees could be taken down that are blocking the view of the parallel parking from traffic coming east on the road over the bridge, which was the concern the police had, that someone would be pulling out of parallel parking and get smacked. So I'd like to move ahead with, Chris said he'd meet me there someday and call me, he hasn't, but I'd like to move ahead and sort of push that. My sense is it would be better to, since we can cut down the trees anyhow, and the trees aren't doing much, I don't know whether it would be better to cut them down and then ask the safety officer to come look, or maybe have them come look and say, hey, if we cut down the trees, would you consider the parking there? I think. I was thinking first of cutting them down and then having them look. But maybe from a bargaining point of view, it would be better to sort of show it the way it is and then say, if we improve this, what do you think? And yeah. We probably wouldn't guarantee it. Cause yeah, because I don't know what it will cost. I don't know what's there for trees. How much are they? Probably so it'll, be just not, it'll be nothing. I mean, the I would expect the highway department will do it. This okay. is like those a couple of little spruce trees in a oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like they're endangered species or anything. Right. And it will require a filing with CONCOM because it's within so many feet of the water. Mm -hmm. But the CONCOM guy that was there thought it would be a pretty simple filing. So I'd like to... And that's safety first. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then once we do it. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's item one. Uh, Item two about Hicksbridge Landing. And again, this is just for the Northwest section, the idea of creating parking there and maybe putting a picnic bench there. So that people like, and probably put up signs that would say landing permit, Hicksbridge Landing permit parking required. Because I know the fellow and you may know him, Richie's involved in the boating and fishing industry, a guy on con company's name, I forget. He said there would be resistance if it was just open parking because then more people will come to s from out of town to set right. crab traps and stuff. And so I think we have to make it expert permit parking, which already exists, so it's nothing extra that okay, we have to do. You don't want to end up with a parking lot for the fishing off the bridge. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah that's right. The other thing is that uh, we got contracts from two different engineering companies, which we reviewed. You do not have copies of them. Uh, so the subcommittee of Wendy, Brian, and I, along with Jim Hartnett, read these contracts and read these proposals. They were two good companies, both big companies, which was surprising. Uh, we scored the contract, scored the proposals. They were reasonably close. Uh, we opened the prices. The prices were within tens of dollars of each other, which was a little bit comical. Well, I think they just billed it to whatever the, the amount is. And apparently, Jim Harvey said, if we'd said 110,000, it would come up with 109,545 or something. And it's like, oh, OK. So anyhow, <laughs> we then met in this room with one contractor who's had a primary office in Providence um, 
and appeared to have and, and did have a lot of business with the state of Massachusetts around boat ramps and, and good references. Um, and then we met right after that with three or four people on Zoom from this other company um, whose offices were up in Acton, Massachusetts. And we decided on the people from Providence. Uh, they just seemed, particularly to Wendy, more knowledgeable about dealing with the state and dealing with Massachusetts conservation commissions. And they had a very different sense of cost of what it was going to cost to build it than the other people. But their costs seemed to be more in line with what uh, a fellow named Dave Cameron, who you know, Doug. Doug Cameron thought it would might cost. All of which was shocking. Mm -hmm. They said that costs in the last two years have more than doubled. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't know if that'll ever turn around. Um, <clears throat> so we have the money to do this part and we have some we will have some matching money left to do the other part. But uh, at some point other groups in town, not just us, that our stakeholders like the fishermen in town, like the shelf commercial fishermen, those guys, they're gonna have to start doing some fundraising. Because uh, and we can do some of that, but um, that that part of it is going to be significant because we have to get matching money to get the seaport money. But it's good that we're still taking the first step. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it will not just be another plan that ends up on a shelf. And they said that it could be done in a modular way, where if we're only able to get four hundred thousand dollars, we could do the most critical part sooner and then maybe the parking lot later. Um, there is some concern that the entire boat ramp could go right now. That, you know, it's sort of fallen off on one mm -hmm. side. There's concern that it could really fall off and be completely unusable at low tide, which is typically when shell fishermen want to go in the water. So I think there's there's reasons to do this. It's not just making it nicer. Mm -hmm. It's making it want to get in the river you need to do this so we do need a vote from this commission on the contract from uh, GZA known for excellence built to last <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the contract from GZA before I suck it back. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I think we need a second before you we go to comment. Because okay. we can vote it down. Or we can amend the, the motion. I don't think we're voting on a contract. Are we voting on presenting the proposal to the town selectment so that they can do a contract? I think we're I think we're voting to approve the proposal. Right. In this contract. Okay, on the contract. That, that's right. Okay. Are you going to withdraw your motion? I'll withdraw the motion. We now motion to approve the proposal. Second. Any further discussion? It is for close to ninety thousand dollars, which is coming from the state of Massachusetts and not from the town coffers for those people at home that are wondering. Thank you. That's a plus. All in favor of approving this contract? Or Propose. propose all? <laughs> please say aye. 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 And it is unanimous. Great. That's done. Number two, I'm not sure why I put this on here. Maybe because is Adamsville improvements. We really haven't done anything there. We do have a plan to do improvements there. Um, I think there was some question about would we lose the money? But my guess is that 
We won't, because my sense of a lot of these things is we've got the money now, and Where there's the nobody organized. The money came from fines. Okay. Leveled by the DEP. Leveled by DEP on Kendrick Snyder, who has since passed away, and I'm pretty sure that money has now come into our trust fund, but that would be something to check. It would have been a couple of years ago. I think it was like twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars. It might have been now three years ago. So it would be good to look for a large deposit. And who should have made that come from? It would have come from Ken Snyder or somebody else on his behalf. I think it would have come from him. I think because I think the deal was he had to pay it to somebody. But it, it was leveled on by the DEP. Right, it? but I think that, I, and I kind of remember pressing somebody and we had to stand up sort of pressing him for the check. And I'm pretty sure we got the check, but as an item further down in the agenda, we need to do something about the fact that much of this is in Jeff's Swiss whole brain. Swiss cheese whole brain, if you know what I mean. So could you look for that? Got a note here. Great. And my sense is it wouldn't make sense to do improvements there this year. There's nothing terribly wrong with it. It works. It's what we're used to because if we did something and then magically there was a hurricane, it would be a bummer if it all washed away. Atterbury, um, Wendy was going to report on septic. Uh, we had talked about the details of a five-year lease. I happen to be in the assessor's office and have given you these two. You have a two-page stapled thing of preliminary fiscal year 23, and you have last fiscal year 22, you will see that they have figured out ways to tax them further on land that they do not own. It is a chapter of the law that says that if somebody's leasing land, that the town, the uh, country cottage or up at the head pays for the, the taxes on the building and the area of land that it owns. Somehow or other, this they had missed. Right. So, in t I, and my sense is, in terms of fairness to them, not about, I mean, I'm not looking to recapture monies from a past years when we, they didn't know this. But when we're looking at what's, when we're trying to determine what's a fair ongoing rental for that property. In total dollars, we, we should be factoring in the fact that they're paying taxes. Because I know when I computed that earlier, thinking about Country Cottage and the watershed property, I was saying, well, they're not even paying taxes, so how much tax revenue would the town get? Because the tax revenue the town would have gotten at that point if, and this is cut 50% here, not full. Uh, which is important for you to know, the rent was less than the taxes they would pay, which seemed crazy to me. I mean, right. If I was a property owner, if I owned that property and I was going to give somebody a long-term lease, I would at least want to cover my expenses of maintaining that property and paying the taxes uh, and maybe paying the mortgage I had if it was an investment property. And I know that's kind of how it's done because my mom lived for 40 years in a home on rented land. Uh, and and that those were some of the calculations that went into it. They did, for some reason, cut the tax in half, which should be shown and could be understood by somebody that understands this more than I do. So uh, as we're thinking about this, this would be good to consider. Yeah, the, when I was talking to Theo about this law, basically what it's saying is that they're, this is because it's being privately used, mm -hmm. they have the right to tax it. 
and but the lease is actually because it is being privately used so they pay both right yeah they do legally pay both the lease and the lease is the fact that it's not open it's public land but not open to the public right. whereas the tax is a case of because it is being privately used we should be taxing it mm -hmm. you know it's like wrwa is an exempt organization so they are not actually taxed unless they pay pilot money which they said they might but then chose not to right payment in lieu, lieu of, tax. of taxes so um, good. Well, this just bears further research, but it does seem that the, this amount that they're likely going to pay, but they, she was clear, she said it's preliminary. So it may be that they haven't made a final decision about that. The actual amount is probably pretty close. Um, they'll be submitting amounts. Pretty what they're pre FY23 preliminary is because we build they build them this amount bait for the preliminary tax bill, which is the one that went out in July 1st. First half of the year is normally billed 50% oh. of what was billed in the preceding year. But if there's a significant increase, it can be added to the tax for the preliminary, which is what she's saying here. So oh. that's why it went up for the preliminary billing. I thought preliminary meant that they hadn't quite decided how much the land was worth. No, it's so, they, these. This we'll, is we'll all all right. these little numbers in, that are on the sheet mean that's estimated. Pretty, it, it, but it's an estimated yeah. bill. But yeah. it's pretty probably pretty close to what they're actually because we're okay. going to be submitting those numbers to the state very soon right. for approval because everything has to be submitted right. for approval. So, do I remember from not reading the minutes <laughs> that you were going to start working on what might be a fair rent? I was. <laughs> was that a question? That, yes, that was. <laughs> You're in process. <laughs> <laughs> that means I, I didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> it might have been you. Was I, I, don't, I, I don't remember. I don't, may, well, I don't remember either, <laughs> but I, I could have said that. <laughs> that well, okay, well, if, if you might say that, that would be great. We're certainly not going to vote on it, but nope. it would be good to start <laughs> chasing that down because it would be, I think, good for her once she settles in to have a dependable amount that she's going to pay and it'll depending on how we do it it'll mean likely more money for us assuming we go with a set amount for every year rather than an amount with a inflation kicker in it and I'm not sure how to figure that out whether that I mean I know the land leases I'm aware of, somebody makes, you know, in some, somebody makes some estimate about what the 99 year inflation rate is going to be in costs and then sets it and it's the same for 99 years. This is different. This is different because this is only going to be a short term lease. Five years. Right. Yeah. But so it might just be simpler to have it be the same amount every year. but. We will have that in further discussion unless people want to talk about it now. I just have a question. Why was it 200 square feet before? They actually have a deed for a piece of property adjacent to the landing that is literally 200 square feet. It's like this little tiny rectangle that's adjacent to the landing. And that's what, one of the reasons, I think, because they actually owned this other separate piece, but were, was leasing this, it was kind of assumed that's where the value was significantly dropped. Yeah. Just to understand, there must be this little block here. Yeah. No, it, this, this shows it. This is the house. Mm -hmm. This is the river. Mm -hmm. This is the house. This is the little shed that's on page two. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not a shed, it's actually a little playhouse that has a bathroom, doesn't have a kitchen, but they don't rent it. It does have a satellite dish on it. Because um, there is also a little utility shed for their lawnmower. And then this is the driveway. Mm -hmm. This is all town landing. And this is a pretty reasonable facsimile 
of the postage stamp that they own. Hmm. And I, I would expect that at some point that happened when this got developed a long time ago that allowed this whole deal to happen. Um, right, this, they actually purchased this piece of property from somebody and it was separated years and years ago. There were two or three deeds prior to the Atterbury getting it for this little 200 square foot. Right, I think what my sense of what happens is when, because this happens a lot in large plots of donated land to conservation groups, is that something gets donated for tax purposes with what's called an in-holding, so that somebody either has a lease for the rest of their life or something for free. Hey, Landing Commission, here's this property, and it was given to us, but I want to be able to use my little house for the rest of my life, rent-free, or whatever the original deal was, and at some point, either that person or the town said, okay, but you gotta keep something mm -hmm. for God knows what legal reason. Yeah. And yeah. that's how it developed. And then probably that person passed away and the landing commission eventually started charging money for the land. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's what's called an inholding. You see a lot out west, you know, on a thousand, 10,000 acre properties, there'll be houses spotted around. And that's just kind of how it works. All right, so I think then we can move ahead because Wendy's not here to give us a report on the septic there, which was an ongoing concern and will be probably part of the lease potentially. Right, we should. Oh, yeah. Do. Yeah, especially since we're potentially all facing upgrades to septic systems. And it's not even clear that that can be upgraded. I have no idea. Right. And it does say, I, the current lease, I believe, says something about it. It's not on us. The sole responsibility of the VC. Yeah. Point landing update. Number one, wheel stops. Remember that field trip I kept talking about? I didn't go, did you? <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm curious, since you live down there, Richie, I haven't, any, nobody has complained to me about the parking this year. And there was a lot of noise about it last summer. Yeah, I've, I've asked a few of the neighbors, you know, you bumped into and some people who live down at the very end, you know, what kind of a show has it been this year? Right. Last year was, a, well, I won't use the word, it was a show. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like it's taking care of itself this year. I don't know if it's due to the weather or activity. Less business? Or? Well, no, they put a couple of things out. We turn around the pole yeah. to come back north again because it's the dead end. On the east side of it, people were parking out there and you couldn't drive around the pole. So they put a couple of little things out there saying no parking. Like cones or something? On the east, yeah, on the east side, and that's helped a lot. And did the town do that or did they do that? I, well, I, I don't know if it's the heart department, maybe, Chris. But it's, you know, it's and kind of like the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. And yeah. are they permanent, permanently no, no, no. attached? Yeah. Or they put no, them out no, during no. the they, day or they, something? No, they, they could be moved. So if a big water truck or something comes in, they could yeah. be temporarily moved? Well, it's, it's uptight to the, yeah. to the monument almost, the pole oh, okay. of the monument. Right. It's just on the east side of it. Okay. There's a couple of them, and it gets people thinking, like, you know, and there's a cone between the inn and town landing. Right. On the street side there's a cone there. Yep. So people realize that you shouldn't be parking in front of the cone. Which right. is really the roadway. So if they have a tar and mark it, right. That should help that. Okay. So in 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 essence from what I'm hearing is it's kinda of taking care of itself. So down there this year. It hasn't been too bad. Right, but I still people think park up the east side. Right. Using the uh, oyster place and well, make I the day trippers. I took a lot of photos, the few times I've been to Cherry and Webb, I took photos of where basically there aren't headstones or whatever you call them, curb stops. And in general, when you don't have those things, people, because they don't want to scratch their cars or they're in a hurry or whatever yeah. it is, they don't park as close to they would park when there's strikes. Mm -hmm. So it does seem like we would maximize parking if we put in headstones. 
and it would help us make the point with whoever ends up owning the Pakrachuk and Haynes legally that we know this is ours. So personally, I think it's still a good idea to do it. I don't know when to do it because we don't go down there. But before, before the global warming and the sea rise comes in, so you can't park <laughs> there anyway. Right. Be a mute point maybe in twenty or thirty. Right. Well, no, but I, I think we should be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we <laughs> might be putting violence in for boats. Right. Well, I, I do think. I mean, Brenda raised a concern. Brenda, Miss Figueroa, the abutter to the north, raised a concern about the dirt in the parking lot blowing onto her home. Right. But, and would we put up plants or something? And she felt the plants somehow stopped the dust from blowing onto her home. But uh, for one thing, actually, I know, because I measure it, the wind isn't blowing that much this year and hasn't for a couple of years. And those, those plants go down for the winter, so she's getting it all winter yeah. anyhow. Yeah. So it does seem to me that, because I believe that property is still for sale, that it would be wise to go ahead and figure this out. Um, and, and you know, maybe easier off season to do it once. Well, the, well, when are they supposed to do the paving? I was just going to ask that. When are they doing the paving? I, I think they're the going. I think they're supposed to do it this fall sometime. This so, fall or maybe spring or something. I'm I mean, not sure. To me, it almost seems it would be ideal to have a plan in place, and then as soon as they do the paving, then we can go down and put in the wheel stops. Or maybe right before, so it looks like it maybe wasn't us, but it was the town. The, uh, or, yeah, right, right yeah. These stops, are they held in with rods or anything? They have to be driven in the ground? It depends on how you do it. If we go with cement, they just sit there. And that's, in some ways, that's good because they're relatively easy to move. If you do wood, there's it's spikes cool. that you hammer in. And something we ought to do at the head landing is they were installed by the contractor and he never came back to fix it they're too close to the rail fence. So depending on the vehicle you have, if you go until you hit the no stops, way, yeah. you hit the fence first with your bumper. Um, so we would have to put them an understood distance back from the Haynes property and an understood distance. And because Brenda had said that she thought it would be wise to narrow the roadway in front of her house, which is all town property, that roadway. Yeah. Because she said, if you make it clearly one lane, you won't get people parking on the side of it, like, oh yeah, somebody can get by. Yeah. 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 And so she was okay with narrowing it, but narrowing means bye-bye to the plants. Shrubbery. Yeah, because yeah, they get kind of fat on shrubs. Well, but they're also way into, the, yeah. further into the landing than they need to be. Right. All right, so I will find out when, that's a good point, if we did it about the same time, I'm it would look like it was part of that. Part of the, and oh, the yeah. yeah, that sounds right. the other thing, like Jeff, that. depending on how these things are held in, cement, cement won't float away, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you get in the wood or something, you've got to drive things down, I don't know about safety. I don't know if there's any gas pipes down there, because you do have natural gas oh, down yeah. the I think it only goes in about that far. Well, yeah, yeah it's still like Paul dig safe. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Okay, I mean, I'm sure they'll do that for, well, I think they do it for the paving, but I don't know. All right, well, personally, I, if the cement ones are um, shaped like this, and it's a local company that makes them, I think the cement ones would make more sense than the wood ones I've seen are... Do you have any interest in decaling them down the road in the future? What about what? Decal, you know, putting information on it. Decals. Like Decals. Landing, landing or town landing or, or parking. 20 yeah. minute parking or, you know. Right, so cement would be easier to paint That's than wood. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. And then if you, if, if some reason you change your mind down the road, you could use these somewhere else in another town landing maybe. Right, or, or the or some parking lot in town. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, th I mean, cement isn't quite as attractive as old, old railroad ties, but 
it seems like it's it's about the same cost. Yeah. And you can adjust them a little bit. Yeah. Just you can push them around with the loader. All right. So I will still try to pursue that and have a field trip at some point. Moving along to number five, signage rocks. I was actually used on a trip landing this weekend, and there were six cars parked there and two with trailers. Uh, it was impressive that that was actually really being actively used. On uh, the trip? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's good to see often. I drive by there whenever I go windsurfing, which is sometimes twice a week, sometimes twice a month, and there's oftentimes no one there. It does seem that the abutter renter person didn't get the message at first. They but I spoke with her a couple of times, and then she still didn't get the message. But then it sounded like she got the message because she's not parking there now, or there's a different renter or something. No, it's the same person. Um, I do know the owner spoke to her and so forth. She still parks there to let her spouse out who has mobility issues. That's why she does that. And that's why she was parking over there because he, it's too far of a walk. Uh huh. To oh, get. that's good to know. So, because of that, that's why she was utilizing that spot. I'm fine with that if she moves her car after. And she that's what she's in. been doing. And she, she'll. You know, if she has groceries or something, she pops there and then we'll end up moving the car. Okay you know? with that. Yeah. Uh, I did speak with Albany's. Oh, good. The stone mm -hmm. cutter people. I think I might have sent you an email on this. Um, I showed them a picture of the Emma Trip Rock. They couldn't remember whether they did it or not. Mm -hmm. um, said they they could do it. Mm -hmm. Price would depend on whether we supply the rock or they supply the rock, and we move the rock or they move the rock. Um, they couldn't give me a price without me set, telling them what's going to be on. So oh, number of letters, right? Number of letters, basically. So I think I could easily go back to them if we decided which landings are going to get them and mm -hmm. what do we want them to say. Well, at this point, we have the Adamsville landing. And then a question about, do we need one at the head? We already have the sign at, on the park. Do we need one over by the kayak shop and stuff, or is that already signed up? We already have a rock there. I don't yeah. know if they can do it in place. Oh, yeah, they can. Oh, yeah, because they'll go to the cemetery and do stones. Um, I don't think we really need more signage on the landing area itself. Yeah. At the, uh, head. the head. It's obvious enough that. I think that, you know, with the one over by the park and stuff, I think mm -hmm. it's enough. Um, with the way the cars all park and stuff, it just. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. The one overkill. Mm -hmm. all right. All right. I agree. So at that point, it's just a matter of do we want to do East Beach Landing or leave that alone? or whatever we're going to call it. The, remember the one by the, next to the causeway? The Clyde Goose Ferry, yeah. Oh, the lifeboat station. Yeah. yeah, I think last time we talked, we thought maybe not, and we sort of couldn't come up with a name anyhow. Um, See how you make out with the first one. So, yeah. So, so certainly, yeah, why don't you ask them how much for Adamsville? What do you want, just Adamsville Landing? Do you want? Yeah, I think just R Adamsville. Rock Island Westport or anything? No, I think just Adamsville Landing. What's in Rock Island? <laughs> <laughs> I think Adamsville Landing would do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and right. whatever the typeface size was, because they looked at the other one, right? They did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something similar. So, Actually, I would ask them if it's hit by graffiti, can it, is there a way to get it clean off? Yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. they the do have is. sprays now you can sort of pre treat the rock. But the fixed bridge looks awful. Have you seen the bridge? Oh, oh the bridge. No, the bridge. Uh, on the south side? The bridge itself on the south side. I'm tagged a lot of times. 
Uh, re with? Re recently retagged oh. with pink spray paint. Mm. Yeah. I did notice that they have spent, the state spent a lot of money ripping up the subside towers on the north of Gooseberry. Mm -hmm. And that thing's really been ripped up now. So you really have to be a rock climber with a paper <laughs> to go up there. Well, pole vault up there. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving along, number six, the Porta John. Um, it has been my, I have seen that Osprey, the current owners, are choosing not to stay open when business isn't good. And so they are having a shorter and shorter fall season, like it might just be two days a week. Mm -hmm. And they're not open even seven days a week, it seems, for much of the summer. And we're paying for the Porta John. It seems like it's a nice resource. And we have now started, whenever they show up, they open. We used to have keep it locked all the time because that seemed like the best way to do it. But one of the users dropped the key and the lock into the toilet. And nobody got it back out. Yep, for people at home watching this. So we went and got a new lock and new keys. It has occurred to me, because the watershed occasionally has events with school children where it would be handy for them to use it, to ask the watershed if when they show up, if we give them a key for the fall season, if they would open it up Monday through Friday when they're there and close it up when they leave. Just because we're an elder population, there's no public bathrooms, anywhere pretty much in this town. The library often just isn't open. Um, and just one people, so it would sort of be a test, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like a resource. It's, re I go and I check it every once in a while. Even, they clean it on Fridays. I've checked it on a Wednesday, Thursday, because I have a key. It is the sweetest smelling porta john than I've ever been in after five days. It doesn't get used much. So it seems like, We've got it. Why not make it available to the people? I don't know. Yeah. And we'll just see. I, see I, how it goes. That's all we can do. You think. know, if Werba would agree to do it. I mean, I, I, I kind of don't want to give the key to the head store, personally, because I don't want it to sort of become their port of job. I'm not going to say their customers or they can't use it, yeah. but it seems like I'd rather give it to a tenant. Mm. And they, they have somewhat limited capacity in their in-house bathroom. So it seems like it would be good for them to have a key. Do we need a motion on that? Okay, good. Moving right along. Uh, <laughs> Suggest that she echo see them. Wendy the typically sends the minutes out. I don't have copies of them here because she oftentimes brings them with them. Her, do we think we need to have copies here in order to approve them or have people read them and feel comfortable with what is said there? To approve them at the next meeting. The mm -hmm. last minutes, um, I don't recall, I wanna say, I remember her sending them through and I usually do read them, so. But I'm happy to wait. We can wait till next. It only takes two minutes yeah, to approve the meetings, I can't help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because sometimes we've waited as much as six months to approve minutes, so it's not like. Yeah. Okay, but you can see next to minutes approval, the word filing. I see that some people on this commission have three ring binders, and, and seem to be organized about. The document, I'm assuming that those are landing commission documents that are showing up there. They are. Yeah. I am not that person. <laughs> I, I have never been that person. And I think I need to sort of fess up to the fact that I probably will never be that person. And someone recently said, hey, Jeff, your minutes on the website, you haven't had minutes on the website now for three years. I was like, oh, really? Oops. Uh, and I know that I have not, I'm not good at home about it. I was lucky to be able to dig these up 
I'm just a mess with paperwork. It's amazing to me, I was a state contractor for 20 years, but I had someone who took care of that part. And we used to have Lucy Tabbitt take care of that part. So uh, I'm not aware legally whether we have to keep paper copies of things anymore, because I'm not filing anything down the hallway here either. Um, we need to keep copies somewhere. I mean, if they're on the website or something, but we do need, we are supposed to add copies. Of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. So. Current copies of our leases and things like that. And, yeah, I and a lot that, of these things are in the records. There's a records retention law. Um, and there's a lot of different documents, some, and they vary. Yeah. on time frames. I know borrowing I have to hold on to for seven years after the end of the borrowing. Yeah. Which, with the school borrowing, I'm not going right. to worry about it. I'm not going to be here. But. <laughs> well, I, think the, I think the leases are on there because I know when I redo the leases every year, I go to the website and I'm happy to, if I haven't given you access to the shared Google file folder where they're all there, that I will write myself a note. Look for the leases, Jeff. Um, so if we're putting them on the website, do you think it's important to put them in the file cabinets here that are not locked or anything else? I mean, no one's ever asked. To see them or anything, but if they do, we're supposed to be able to produce a copy. Um, but beyond the minutes. Beyond the minutes. Minutes we're supposed to have, I know that, and I don't know how long we need to keep those, the leases. Are you like. guys laughing that uh, this is somewhat painful for me to acknowledge? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I'm not that guy either. Me either. That's why I'm forced to do this. Yeah, but, you, but I've been doing it this way for 40 years, and at least you're forced to do it. You have guilt or something. The Catholics? It's just the difference between an A person and a B person. Yeah, I think I'm a C person. Anyhow. Uh, I'm not going to say it. anything. Look at my desk. Okay. I'm going to look. I'm going to go look for the leases. But you think it was, if it was on the shared website? Because I'm assuming that's backed up. The shared drive. I'm not sure if it, this part of what we have is cloud in the cloud. Yeah. The, well, the shared drive thing. Right, so if that, it's in the cloud, it should still be there. <laughs> right, but if the cloud disappears, does Keith or whatever that guy's name is, does he back it up? No, the cloud is the cloud. That cloud drive is supposed to be backed up off-site somewhere. Um, so like, I need to ask Keith that. Mm -hmm. Is it backed up? Like I say, the cloud is, but it's, it's kind of... It's like to another cloud, though. Yeah, it's to another location. Serious cloud. Well, I'll ask him. He, he's pretty <laughs> nimble. It's usually he's pretty careful. When I try to change some things about oh, yeah, something he's, else, he's pretty kind of careful guy. So I will ask him if he's comfortable. He that protects it's our out. sites. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I will ask him. All right. Um, Other business not anticipated time of posting. That I will say is just I heard from Andrea today from yoga and she said she emailed me and said she would be sending forwarding us a check. That's the person that the people at home that uses the landing for yoga classes and collects money and gives some back to the to town. The town. Yeah. I think that's all. I keep feeling like there was some other business, but maybe between the contract and my admission of failing at filing, <coughs> that may have covered it. <clears throat> oh, next meeting time. I have one. Who's today? The sixth. Yes. So, if we were to go to October, it would either be the 4th or the 11th. 
The 11th, the 10th is a holiday. Columbus Day. Columbus Weekend. Day. Yeah. Uh -oh, somebody growled about the 11th. I'm not sure how much business we have. I mean, we'll have signage about the rock thing, and maybe, assuming that I organize a site visit to look at boundary markers, could happen. Do we need to have a, what I'm asking is, do we need to have a, another meeting? I mean, one of the things that will start up pretty quickly, now that I think about it, is uh, there's going to be, with the Hicksbridge contract, even though Technically, it's not our landing. We're sort of taking this on. There's going to be a need for public input and public meetings about this to try to get some input from the public. I mean, legally, you have to do that. And what's going to happen is I'm going to show them my cartoon of what I think might be nice. They had some ideas about it when they proposed to us, and they think they can deal with that little marsh area and get and transplant it or something. Uh, and they had some ideas about the concern about the kind of floats and stuff. Um, I happened to speak with someone on the Harbor Advisory Commission this weekend, and I feel like we should all pat ourselves on the back that we meet regularly and we do stuff. They have not met for three years. But the Harbor Commission? Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Anyhow, Very uh, active. well, and I don't know what that means, but I am glad that we are taking care of business here and there. Um, so I guess we probably should meet again because it may be that that meeting will then become one of the first public input meetings mm -hmm. because we have to, I mean, I'll show them my cartoon, they'll tell me what might or might not work about that, and then pretty quickly we want to get somebody from Shellfish, somebody from Harbor Advisory, and invite the public, whoever shows up, and say, well, this is kind of what we're thinking. Before we, before we spend our first $20,000 in them doing more serious drawings. Um, and there's some other details that need to be checked on. Does anybody know anyone or any of you connected to, is it the Masons that have that building just? Up at the top of the hill? Yeah. Yeah, anybody know them really well? I know. John Gifford's a Mason. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah. John Gifford's a Mason. Yeah. John Gifford. And I think Sam Manley. Yeah. Who, Sam is? Mm -hmm. I know Sam. He's got a lot of free time. No. <laughs> He's retired. <laughs> yeah. He's just a grandparent, right? Yeah, twins. Yeah, twins. Yeah. yeah. All right, and I'm sorry, there's so many Giffords. Former police. Oh, that John. He supports for even keel. Right. Okay. Um, there's an issue that the exit of Hicksbridge Landing is actually probably on their land. The ramp going down? No, going. Oh, going, going out. Going out. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a problem. If you're going to pave it and really make it yours by sort of improving it. So, so, you, don't, so you don't. So at this point, you don't know where the boundaries at. Right. But in order, say it? in order to do anything like this, yeah. you have to. You know, we're going to probably pay Sean to do a boundary search. But everybody's pretty sure, but yeah, it's... I was going to say, when they, when that got put in up there like that, it seemed like it was farm to the Masons. It would have what? It seemed like it was a little close to the Masons' property. Yeah, and I don't know how they feel about it, whether we have to make some deal with them or not. It would be very expensive to move that exit. Like, very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So, well, uh, maybe, maybe that, maybe it's up to them without holding the, maybe it's holding the bank up for them too. So maybe right. they're benefiting from it. Yeah, and, yeah. Maybe and, and they may be okay with holding it. Yeah, we may sure. give them huh? a tax yeah. break yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know. But double yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. It could be better than <laughs> the donation. Or, I, I don't know, but yeah. it would be, that's, that is one big outstanding issue. 
um, that could make a difference. So I know Sam, is anybody particularly close to John Gifford? I, I mean, I know who he is, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you bump into him once in a while. He's like a suicide. He works over it. across the street here. He's a Keel Realty. I know. He's a, he was a scout or two, so I know him. Yeah. Okay. So, would you be comfortable um, yeah. saying, hey, we've got this situation? He's actually my cousin. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love you. I love you. John, give uh, hey. John a call. Um, all right, I'll give I'll call Sam Manley. That's all I got. Oh, so anyhow, how about are people more comfortable with the fourth or the eleventh? That being that a vacation day is the tenth. You get the holiday weekend before, right? Yeah. <coughs> if it's the eleventh. The fourth, so people week might before. be going on an extended holiday vacation, is what you're saying, and not be able to be here? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Just throw a date out and see how it flies. Well, that's uh, my feeling is just pick a day and book it if for some reason if we don't have enough on the agenda, we can always postpone it. Push it. Okay. If, if it's right. important, you can move it up. All right, so we'll go with the fourth for now. We'll leave it up on the chair. chair. We'll go with the fourth. Yeah, we know how important that is. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, landing, and I'm also putting in a calendar note to post the meeting. <clears throat> we said the fourth. Yes. Uh, at 5.30. Anything different up to the chair? All right, oh yeah, great. Thanks a lot. Okay, so, and then on Wednesday, on the Tuesday before, Post the landing. Post Brad the Brightman. landing commission meeting. Brad Brightman was a Mason. Hmm? Brad Brightman was a Mason. I haven't seen him. He was a Mason. A Mason. Oh, was a Mason. Yeah, I haven't seen him. What's he doing? He's um, in Stowe. Treasurer. Mark? No, Stowe, Mass. Oh, Stowe, Mass. He's treasurer in Stowe, Mass now. Oh. Is he, does he drive there every day? No, he uh, lives that? in Cambridge. Really? And he's just renting his house down here or something. Oh. Wow. So we set. Amazing. We make a motion to adjourn. So uh, we make a motion to adjourn. Someone could do that. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Third. All approved. All yeah. adjourned. Thank you.